dear venerable sisters and brothers dhamma friends today also we are now preparing for the day stock may everyone settle down and give the consent with three times sadhu 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 namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasse नमो तस्से भगवत अर्हत सबुद्धस्से नमो तस्से भगवत अर्हत सबुद्धस्से पुनच पर आनंद बिक्कु अमनसी करकाशन चायतन संयंग अमनसी करज्ञान चायतन संयंग आकिंजन संयांग पटीच मनसि कौती एक दियबल दम फ्रेंड्स टुडे इज द नाइन स्टोक एंड सोफा वी हैव थ्रू आउट टेकन दिस चूल शून्यत सुत एस द मेन टॉपिक एंड वी आर बाय द बुद्ध फ्रॉम वेरी gross examples slowly slowly uh, cut through into the very subtle nuances or very subtle layers in the mind in order to enter into the voidness or abiding by voidness at the beginning he mentioned about this sensuous uh, objects what we call the assets in our day to day life and in our social way so usually unless otherwise you are instructed do unless otherwise you have a, that genuine kind of a search our whole life is uh, spending or while away for the sensuous pleasure but uh, very little proportion of the uh, human population wish to go little beyond that that is what we call the religious quest or spiritual quest so when and there where it happens they wish to see not only the tip of the iceberg they become inquisitive what is underneath which is pushing this tip then only uh, they will come to know tip of the iceberg is only 1/10th of the volume majority of the ice volume is uh, subsurface under the water and it is always pushing 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 that is why the tip is uh, always about the water layer and according to the tip we recognize individual berg and that is how our human mind too according to the uh, obvious part or ethical part it or social part or interactions we recognize each other and make out each other tall and short black and white male and female rich and poor all but just the tip but as far as the total volume is concerned a uh, total picture will be more similarities than discrepancies so when and where someone is going to uh, seriously observe the subsurface or submarine area uh, usually it is called going against the grain so such people are happy to uh, explore into uh, mind or unconscious mind or uh, submarine <coughs> subsurface area of the mind uh, so for that we have to very prominent prominent two streams of uh, understanding the eastern and western psychology and uh, eastern one uh, there are a lot of traditions and uh, most of them Uh, consummation i came up to the maturity with the or oh, enlightenment of the buddha and he presented very solid very sound uh, explanation about this subsurface area and uh, 
not the basically Sigmund Freud, but his disciple, the Carl Jung, came a lot of ideas about this uh, subsurface idea mind, or uh, which is mind which is not much prominent, and uh, therefore even the Western thinkers they also have given some thoughts about that, but still there are some uh, differences in the methodology. But the Eastern one often think about the uh, ethical responsibilities or physical and verbal restrainment, which is the part lacking in the Eastern thinking. So therefore, many found the uh, I, sorry, it is lacking in the Western thinking. So therefore, many found the Western psychology is more scientific than when compared to the Eastern psychology, which is more mystic. But now we are in an, in an era, age, the both of them are about to go in hand in hand. So therefore, Easterners are uh, sharing with the West and the Westerners are sharing with the East. So in that sense, that uh, our time has matured uh, to be open to each other, I think the best lot will be the people, those who are practicing mindfulness or those who are practicing insight meditation. But for the moment, they are not so exposed yet, but the groundwork is happening. So first and foremost part is the understanding about this uh, total life or the sensuous pleasure is not uh, the main thing for humans. Human can go a little deeper. So they can do away with uh, this luxurious life. They can do away with this consumerization. Instead, <coughs> they can try to live in the moderate or celibate or monastic life. And when and where someone is going to take that decision, entering into a forest or sitting under the tree or using a solitude place is a huge sacrification and those who sacrificed uh, appear in the brown color those who are not appear in the white color so you can see the proportion this is the usual way and when and we are whoever may be brown or white come and sit in on her or his cushion, even though it is physically renunciated, of course for the white, temporarily, for the brown, it is permanently, that is how the society is interpreted. When then we are sit on the cushion, you find even though physically you are get a distance from these sensuous objects, the mind is often acquainted with this perception on the sensuous matters and that become uh, unbearable nuisance even though you wish to get rid of this whole ideas thing uh, related to the sense pleasure and the sense of objects your belongings and your assets but when you close your eyes they become more prominent more conspicuous and mind is very happy to meddle with this whole sense pleasure, sense desire, which is called in the meditation jargon. And when and where it is not being fulfilled, the arrogance, hatred, uh, unhappy situation, and therefore these two are playing a main role in the early part of your meditative career, even though you are going to get a uh, intensive training, all the others are uh, in the same parallel thinking, but you can understand your mind is not so renunciated, it is still in the uh, household affairs or uh, perception on the sense pleasure. So in order to get rid of this pleasure or sense pleasure which is happening in the perception level, level of the perception, the Buddha suggests, why don't you focus your attention to something verifiable, concrete, materiality, and try to keep the mind occupied with that object, such as called 
meditation object. So for that, the Buddha very practically, very pragmatically suggests your own body. He says, in that sense, uh, the human body is much more suitable laboratory as well as an object for meditation. So when and where you focus on your body, you find mind is wandering off, daydreaming, fantasizing, going out and thinking about the sensual pleasure or hatred. So if you, some or the other, try to manage to keep within the body strategically, then often you find when and where this desire, sensuous desire, and the hatred is missing, immediately mind falls into the sleepiness. Because this sensuous pleasure or desire and the hatred is the fuel for the mind to be awake, mind to be creative, mind to be that motivated. So when and where you <coughs> become successful in keeping the mind face to face with the object of meditation, maybe your body or sometimes maybe elementary characteristics uh, in your body manifested under your very nose here and now. So when that happens it becomes very boring instead uh, instead of this uh, normal habitat of the mind, untrained mind that is the sensuous pleasure and the hatred. So when and where you become meditation becomes success and then you can feel the, the lethargic slimy mind sloth and over, sleepiness creeping. So when it happens, it becomes yet another fuel for the untrained, uninstructed yogi to develop hatred. Hatred to the, that very sleepiness and then uh, doubt about the past and the excitement about the future, the regret about the past and the excitement of the future and a lot of doubts happen. Am I a Am I a successful yogi? Am I progressing? But I don't know which, uh, which way I am progressing in Samatha or Vipassana. Is this a good teacher? Is this a good place? Is this a good object of meditation? All the kind of doubts happen. Imagine, in order to make a long story short, imagine when and where your mind is dwelling upon thriving upon that very object that is your part and partial of your body or totality of your body, then you can say that mind is no more with sensuous pleasure, no more with hatred, no more with sleepiness, no more with the past and the future, no more entertaining doubts. That means you resolute, you come to know now the, uh, the materiality, the object of meditation has replaced all the five hindrances. So mind is repetitively applied again and again or noted again and again on that particular object. And each time in order to keep that going uh, rather in an enthusiastic way, you not only just apply the mind but each time you apply you try to taste it. That is to say, when and where the mind is uh, applied or noted with the in-breath, you are just not come back telling that I entered into the in-breath and coming back. Instead, you will try to taste it, see the differences, what is it, how it differs from the out-breath or how it differs from your sensual desire, how it differs from external sounds differs from thoughts and pains. Likewise, you isolate it and delimit it. Uh, that is a kind of inquiring nature uh, followed by this applied thought or noting. So when these two happens, that is your responsibility as a yogi, precise aiming and diligent effort, and then you can say, now my mind is in in-breath and I know it is in-breath. It is not only that, you know it is, you, you are verily aware it is not in outbreath, it is not in thought, not in a sound, not in a pain. And these are the characteristics of the inbreath. And when and where it is go to the outbreath, it is happening naturally. Verily your mind is alert, pinpointed, precise. Now you know I am in the outbreath, outbreath is so and so, and uh, differ from the others. So this is how uh, you promote it. These are the 
ways you promote when it is more and more you acquainted with that very object with the applied thought and the uh, discursive thoughts <coughs> inquiring thoughts the penetration into the object that very object of meditation uh, naturally happens when that penetration happens that the very object appeared solid gross conspicuous with its own natural characteristics that is the tip of the iceberg that i referred and more and more you become acquainted with you bound to see there are individual characteristics slowly 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 fading off instead you are bound to see the common characters what are the similarities you find in the in breath and out breath both you may see get a vibration you may see kind of energy you may see kind of a uh, friction uh, these are common for in breath and out breath so unless otherwise you are go prepared you go uh, with the theory understanding often that is also leading to dramatic nature to pale uh, monotonous and uh, boredom so if you are well instructed and go you may understand more and more you go there there is a uh, changes chronologically if you observe whatever may be the materiality more and more you familiarize it more and more you keep it face to face with more and more you make it immediate with you and the object is undergoing changes so that change in this particular sutta in the chula sunyata sutta the buddha explain in terms of elementary characteristic early part you see earth element or a i element whatever may be prominent according to your personality trait and if you are to observe it again and again immediately with full enthusiasm with the prepared mind to see its changes evolution you may ultimately end up with uh, thinning down of that particular element that you have selected ultimately end up with the uh, space limitless space so on your friction or your mm, effort uh, correspondingly less uh, when and where you are bound to observe the space so this is for a educated person well aware person with the full awareness and the preparedness it appear like a achievement or penetration into the object but if you are not well instructed if you go unprepared you feel like you losing the mindfulness you feel like losing very mindfulness not the object you feel like losing very concentration not the object so often you complain you find that meditation mindfulness or we can say concentration is good when the object is cross but when it becomes subtle and subtle you become you lose heart and you find the meditation is becoming dull and no mindfulness like no concentration like that is nothing but your wrong interpretation but there you have to do a lot of interviews a lot of discussions in a in an open mind and ultimately moment you change your perspective uh, that is to say go prepared for this kind of thing you find a mind grow also changing not only the object the mind also changing from gross to the subtlety that means you are slowly slowly become subsurface submarine now we are not only the tip now now we are not with your personality trait or your experience is no more with your senses but it is uh, taken over by the mindfulness by the concentration now mindfulness and the concentration become the leading factor and more and more you go there you see matter to the external gross untrained mind appear like solid unit and have its own individual characteristics but when and where you become immediate with it and acquainted with it look at it look at with the correct perspective ultimately you find the space is much more prominent than the 
the matter by itself, that means, this is in the scientific jargon, it says, the matter change into energies. Earlier it had all the qualities to, at, attributable qualities to say it is a matter. But more and more associated, you find this into the characteristics are disappearing, ultimately end up with energies where there is no gravity can work, where there is no uh, shape can exp experience, and there is no in and out boundary. It is just um, uh, energy waves, and when this happens, the matter dissolves into non-materiality. So this is also kind of a evolution, kind of a revolutionary advancement in the meditation, according to this particular sutta, but it is not so easy for a yogi with the bewildered mind, with the wrong concept, and uh, having so much of love to his or her body, having so much of love to his or her um, life. So therefore it is kind of a threatening to keep the correct perspective. That's why the Buddha says that when and where the object is prominent, of course, you can relate object with the mindfulness and the concentration, but when in the object loses its shapes and the banners and the uh, individual characteristics, still keep in the mindfulness, it, you must be well instructed. You must have thousand and one mistakes, your own mistakes, and through that you must evolve in order to expect it, or in order to, to prepare for it, and then you can go into the, the space. So when that happens, it appears like uh, for a successful yogi a great achievement, but it took few sittings, or rather successful sittings, he or she may understand, even though with the strategic application of the precise aiming and the diligent effort, even though it is going to the space, you feel kind of uneasiness, you feel kind of uh, outcasted light of kind of idea, you can't orient yourself and no pivotal point, no benchmark, uh, everything disappeared, so you feel like to do something or to imagine what is the next, each and every effort complain, question, indicate you are not happy with this space. It's a very, each and every individual present it in their own unique way, but everyone start to entertain doubts when and where mind is slowly, slowly entering into this boundless space. When they imagine you still uh, endeavoring the situation, tolerating the situation, familiarizing the situation and more and more you get uh, discussed, interviewed and prepare your mind and ultimately uh, the main thing to you to understand or what the Buddha is communicating is even though mind goes to this kind of a frictionless space, there is an underlying natural underlying character uh, which is discriminating what is having and what is not having, what is the matter and what is the antimatter, what is so-called existence, what is the other called the space, and this discrimination is not belongs to you, but it is happening in each and every thought moment. Not only that is discriminating, soon it is discriminated, you will be pulled to the have the side which is having materiality, measurability, communicability, individual characteristics. So this is the what uh, the the consciousness is consciousness is doing. So hardly you may understand this as the nature of the human mind. Rather you will understand this is doing by some doing by by something or you naturally feel the uneasiness in the boundless space. So they are the Buddha 
come out and give a suggestion just try to familiarize as much as possible the the boundless space and meanwhile see their uneasiness unsatisfactoriness and kind of a friction uh, to get out from this boundless space instead it is expecting or imagining thinking about something existing so something tangible something gross so when such a thing happen the buddha says what again happens is when then we are mind is jumping out of this uh, boundless space again you feel you bound to feel the body sounds pains breath all the kind of a mixture and the buddha says don't think this is your personal mistake this is the way the mind is developing the allergic reaction mind is developing the unconscious reaction and pulling it back to the known rather than unknown pulling it back to the new uh, old rather than new and to uh, be parallel with to understand what the buddha explained and to see it by yourself uh, it need thousand and one mistakes thousand and one sitting and all successful from the buddha's point of view but the yogi will come out with so much of complaints now i can go to the space very quickly but either mind slip off or mind become frightened or all of a sudden you get out of that uh, space and then you feel like so much uneasiness mind becomes so scattered mind be- mind becomes so unmindful and they are all without even your intention you feel like get up and go sometimes you really get up and go but if you are getting a good interview and good discussions and you try to keep it with even after you get agitated after this quick sh- shaken situation and if you become patient and try to find again the breath and try to develop the beginner's mind and start the new game new chapter you can see this out of this agitated mind again the calming down starts breath becomes subtle ultimately subtlest and again it goes to uh, this boundless space quicker than the first shy and even then within a short period again the mind get excited but if you apply the same thing again you can calm it down and then now you see often mind with some uncontrolled objects and frequently it goes back to the space so this is the point where you understand you have to understand uh, the function of the vijnana function of the consciousness it is separating the have and have not new and the old known and the unknown and all is pulling back to the known old uh, materiality so in order to get a ground get a balance get the equilibrium uh, the the tactic the buddha suggests is even though you are, uh, the boundless space is a big achievement in your meditation and now you have fairly familiarized it try to observe this agitated mind and the space mind with the boundless space in the equal way so this is uh, advanced level training you know all of a sudden mind become agitated and you are bound to feel irritating pains in the body distracting sounds outside and thinking to keep without any my kind of a team thinking happen and in between breath also start and when and where are you be patient and calm and again observe the breath in the very same sitting maybe a little bit of little adjustment of your bodily uncomfortability and again the mindful now catch the momentum and you can go to the space boundless space and imagine one master or familiarize it 
or season it not to react or not to discriminate this have object have no object not to discriminate the old and the new not to discriminate the known and the unknown then only the grip of the consciousness will be reduced otherwise consciousness is going to take the mean advantage of this discrimination of this sectarianism of this have and have no difference so therefore your rational knowledge always contributed to the uh, established consciousness so therefore you have to withdraw your rational mind and let them happen and try to observe them in an unassuming way non reactional way sometimes mind is full of uh, boundless space and sometimes it's a hell of a thing so much of objects happens even though it is not inflicting much in an unbearable way but it's become a nuisance now you i try to be patient with this nuisance as well as the space so imagine how much you have to train it how much you have to familiarize it so to go further then you will understand you now know the art of not to worry even the objects are there not to worry even no objects not to entertain doubts not to entertain boredom not to entertain monotony not to entertain uncertainty and this training is going to give a such a deep changes in your brain or uh, employing the neuroplasticity train your mind and change your brain is going to take place more and more you train the now brain going to get equal chances for the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere so far the hem- left was leading it is very rational it is very rude it is domineering and it is sectarian they are they are for right brain had no can't hear its view so now you are going to give this have and have not new and the all known and the unknown everything uh, equal kind of uh, unassuming non reactional way so then you can see kind of a balance kind of a contentment kind of a peace of mind kind of a saturation which is not by rational thinking which is not by any formula not by any theory but kind of a fulfillment in the life kind of a fulfillment in the humanness is going to happen and you can understand even in the walking meditation some people are talking who cares i do my own walking and amidst of all the kind of chaotic situation still i can set the balance scan i can be skillful to get more and more deep penetration into the walking meditation and when you go back to the day to day activities definitely the external world is not meditating never mind main thing is not to worry mind your own business keep the attention as much as in your body and see that very deep space limitless space you experience in the sitting meditation a successful sitting meditation traces are there even if you are in the uh, multitasking in the busy life traces are there of course it is less when compared to the sitting but if you know how to filter it and have selective absorption you can see that limitless space everywhere it is there to a certain extent maybe little higher in the walking meditation and the highest in the sitting meditation in the successful and throughout there you find the picture as well as the canvas canvas means uh, the f- space canvas means limitless space and the picture also there sometimes you get attracted to the picture so much so you get blindfolded to the canvas sometimes you get so absorbed into the canvas you fail to entertain the picture so these two even the proportion even though the proportion is changing it is irrespective of your posture irrespective of your other identities moment you moment you understand you get a kind of a relief which is 
and that relief can be recognized as that even though mind is busy with this external distraction and fantasizing and uh, daydreaming and all the kind of thing or whether it is experiencing boundless space no volitional involvement no will you are completely withdrawn and you become an observer and more and more you assume the neutral observer's position you learn the art of just being without getting involved without deciding deciding this is good this is bad this is just this this is unjust this is beautiful this is not this is desirable this is not desirable all the kind of thing of course they are working but they are they are malid malevolent power we rule and power slowly slowly reducing because your main task is to not to worry not to entertain doubts not to uh, get not to feel like the frustration and so that yeah, they are malice power slowly slowly reducing ultimately you may come into a balance or equilibrium the mind feels so empty even though there are a thousand and one reason to be worried and sometimes mind is completely in the uh, space boundless space but even there is no person to entertain it there is no person to throw parties because your will is gone your your volition is gone and you you got dumb bound person just observe uh, the limitless space even there are so much of reason to be worried you know how to even though you are you being eyed person person with the eyes you behave like a blind the visual objects are there but you know these visual objects are stopping at the end of the visual end of the seeing why should i proliferate my thinking about what i have seen your mind is quite ready for the next thought moment to accept it is as it is it may be seeing or hearing or spelling or whatever may be so they are also uh, the rational mind is to linger lingering of uh, about what you have seen but now due to lack of volitional contribution due to lack of employment of your will you stop seeing at the seeing you never contribute uh, just like a camera even the camera is taken a beautiful low ugly shot camera if you don't feel any pride it will feel any ashamed because it is stopping at that uh, catching the film catching the scenery now these voice recorders they catch the voice but they never get enlightened voice recorders never get enlightened because they are not contemplating of what is using but you can't do it because your mind is it is called regurgitation vomiting and eating again that is what the cattle is doing ruminants so our mind is ruminant mind whatever comes we keep the better part and vomit it and re- chew in the cud and again swallowing the same it's a little ugly but this is the life this is what it was now buddha says seeing stop at the seeing hearing stop at the stops hearing and the other sense stop at that level and thinking stop at that level that is how you behave even though you are an eyed person behave like a blind even though you have a very good intact ears even the things are happening very loosely you never heed you never going to uh, remind them or even you have the good smell all factory fa- faculty and the taste buds and the tactile sensation in the body whether you contact cold or heat hot no discrimination you just know it so when that happened the mind also due to these three mind the consciousness also understand mental proliferation upon some of your favorite issues and therefore the selection of issues out of the million of millions of mental objects the filtering happen through your likings and disliking the filtering happen due to your personality traits filtering happen due to your habits filtering happened according to the traditional buddhism from the past 
karmic forces so you whenever you are going to proliferate on mental objects don't think it is a balanced diet you only take a filtered thing which is you like you naturally select reject unlike you what you do not like and you have your personality traits accordingly you have system of values they only filter through and then your habits decides this is to do and this is not to do and your past karmic forces <coughs> combination decide so therefore so far whatever it may be you kept in your memory is utterly biased utterly partial and now instead you allow everything to come in so when such a thing going to happen now our brain is going to get uh, such a uh, chance your all the neurobics 100% of the brain is now fully awake fully ready so anything to happen no preconceived ideas no habitual reactions no assuming anything that becoming is exactly you become a child you are fully open you see the whole world is green eh you not necessarily it is not asking your decision why should you commit things are happening its own accord and still you are fully taken part because you are very really vigilantly observe it but never go for inference or decisions or commitment or will or volitional activities so when that happens the akinchanya that is what i interpret as akinchanya that the mind take nothing to remember everything become a passing show so there are more than uh, the endless space more less understanding of the have and have not me and not me now you see still less and less amount of frustration less and less amount of substantiality and when you experience it what happens is in this meditation you completely go into a slumber you can't remember whether you were in a sleep or not but early also in your early part when you are dealing with these four five hindrances sleepiness come and disturb but here you will witness your posture is intact and before going off also it was in a mindfulness after this miss again it come back to the mindfulness so you can simply say it is a sleepiness but no memory no sign no attributes and don't you don't feel like missing too so when that happens it be like a complete accident complete impromptu and you feel like you are succumb to the situation and feel ashamed now situation is totally understand beyond your control because i think they have i am ergo cogito sum that is what the dekart mentioned so you have no past memory there you have no thinking thinking always happening through this perception papanya sanya nidana ani papancha sankha the buddha says your mental proliferation completely based upon your attribution or your labeling or your perception when and where everything appear equal without discrimination good and the bad big and the small then mind loses its mechanism but still you are completely engage in the world but memory disappears attribution this label that label good and the bad disappears so awakening into that kind of uh, mentality appear like impossible awaken it is like awakening into a dream awakening into a uh, sleepiness so when you are training again and again and uh, instead of entertaining the situation exploring into that or to say uh be aware of how is the entering into this uh gap and how is the emergence emerging from this gap and that become your training 
you definitely know in the sitting there may be some kind of a eclipse like slips gaps and slumber but preparation for that sometimes you feel everything come align with and uh, all of a sudden you lose the control lose the memory and again when you awaken you comes to know there may be some sound or a pain or a thought or breath immediately appear and then not you you become shaken to see feel uh, the past thought moment i had no memory whether i existed at that moment or not but the newly coming object the sound the thought the pain or the breath going to make lot of stories and never allows your mind to feel where you came out is full total equilibrium total lack of friction total comfort but our mind has a bad habit to find uh, having something is better than nothing that is what our mind so therefore the nothingness you consider as the lower grade when compared to the something so in the ananda sapai sutta the buddha says uh, whenever yogi in meditation going to feel this kind of a quick shaking off and come back to the sensuous world objects and the faculties he or she must train that coming back even uh, in a such a to a such an extent he, he or she must understand appearing object will take will take me for a ride appearing object will infest my mind with likings and disliking in appearing object will make me prolific thinker but instead if i can compare and see just before appearing of that object i was in a total equilibrium i was in a total uh, lack of friction comfort zone how nice if i can go back to that equilibrium how nice if i can go back to that the lack of friction state so therefore the buddha says when and where are you frequently going and coming especially coming out you have to say etan santan etan panitan yadidang upekha it is calm and it is diligent it is good which is that uh, the equilibrium where you have no memory where you have no friction so uh, the they are the relativity when and we are a friction happen only you will understand non friction when and we are object appeared only you can understand comparatively no object when and we are a sign appeared only you can understand signless situation when and we are perception happen only you can understand non perceptional situation so they are again a kind of a deductive knowledge or inferential knowledge you have to understand non perception is always relative to perception you can't have absolute non perception so therefore you have to find some practical value of the perception that only uh, comparatively leading you to understand this perception indicate previous thought moment i was not in a perception this sign indicates that is why it became exciting earlier i was not in a sign this memory indicates in the early thought moment i had no memory this having this proliferation everything indicate just before that i was not so this comparison again demanding the theory on relativity uh, and uh, when the jnana rama used to say if you have that kind of a bewilderment or if you have any kind of a the entertaining of doubts what is happening that am i losing mindfulness or what is this quick shaking and awakening and again going back to the slumber he says daily when you go to sleep in your day to day life sleep try to see with the tactic of thin slicing of time how this body is slowly 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 go into sleep and to a certain extent you can be aware the preparation 
you can see if it is a sleepiness is not coming you see how difficult and tumbling this and this way and that way on the bed and you are not feel comfortable but instead when you are falling into sleep it is never at an accident it's a gradual process master it monitor it try to see how this is happening and this is only 50 percent of your experiment balance part is soon you get up early in the morning immediately try to understand now my mind awakened but the still eyes are closed try to open your eyes with mindfulness mindfulness must be so lucid so quick the even the getting up awakening considers the two events the mind awakening and then opening of the eyes or whatever may be you do consciously so then only you can understand before this awakening of the mind you were not there there are no signs to indicate the i no signs to indicate the comparison or conceit no signs to indicate any desire but you feel like it's a lost soon you get up only you will see whether i am in nisarvani or back at home then only you feel comfortable because you are back at your normal bed so so much we like having or friction or tension or old or known otherwise you feel like lost so this there are your experimentation will understand the fear of freedom the fear of unknown the fear of new because you are daily when you are waking up from known unknown to known happened like a jumping don't let it happen in a quick sudden action cut that into thin slicing an awakening of the mind and opening of your eyes so when and where you training how you go into the sleeping and how we awake then you can see in a in a day to day activities often mind slip into this kind of a situation sometimes with defilement sometimes without defilements and when it is happening not to worry about that waking up and not to worry about the sign you are going to get not to worry about the uh, the positivity you are going to get you have to be aware of the relativity availability and having something is always related to not having this this is uh, demanding so much of rational thinking so much of inferential thinking and uh, later after passing the akin chanyayatana mind goes to neva sanya na sanyayatana having perception no no perception or all other same still you de- you develop that skill uh, no perception no 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 not no perception neva sanya na sanya so you understand this whole world is nothing but a perception now you reduce slowly 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 to the point perception having and not having both of them are insignificant perceptions there you train the mind uh, the with the available perception is significant or not never mind you have reduced it to the insignificant level and having perception or no perception you train in such a way and that is the point you are going to understand you are in a dream world you are in a just mere perception upon that only you are fighting each other upon that only you try to develop up one upmanship upon that only you try to fix your peg and say this is my center this is i-ness this is what i uh, ego and i need this this is my share so try to collect it but ultimately material once you see through everything is perception and that perception some people those who are not meditating and just uh, doing the philosophical uh, calculation and they say this perception comes and goes without any cause and cause proper cause because it is so unpredictable easily they will put up and say how can we make theories upon the perception because it is come without a cause 
these are the people we call materialists mater, ma, the materialists and they don't care about ethical values they say whatever you do never mind no responsibility on the bearings and therefore easily uh, you uh, entertain without the responsibility some people think uh, according to the, the prehistoric pre-buddhist uh, indian thinking uh, some thought uh, this perception and the soul is the same whenever the soul their perception is there when there is no soul no perception so therefore they have misunderstood the perception and the soul as the synonyms and some instead told this perception is due to the uh, people with the magical powers meditators and having extrasensory perception they can cause perception into yet another person's mind and when and where that happens he or she become conscious once that is pulled back he or she become unconscious so therefore they believe uh, mystics some superhuman beings are there and they can ent- introduce and withdraw and some people to no no they are not human they are su- they are uh, celestial beings omnipotent omnipresent gods or brahma they are the one entering and removing the perception so these are the views and when you are meditating definitely you will go through one after the other often you will think this perception is when it is available i am when the perception is not there i am no more or you never consider this as a no more but you will consider it as a sleep or sometimes you will say this coming and going is due to someone's influence you try to see external beings responsible about you are coming and going of the perception and someone will say it is uh, celestial beings or supreme powers or all the kind of thing even though we attribute it to the pre buddhist thinking the residues of all the kind of thinkings are here so therefore when and where we clear out doubts with respect to one the other three will come and trap you when and you are clearing yet another one Uh, the rest of the thing will come and do it so therefore you have to training it in a, such a way having a perception or no perception it is just like a clouds in the sky the cloud is clouds never smear touch the sky clouds are just passing and therefore if you know clouds is with respect to the sky and uh, you can understand sky with clouds and without clouds so both of them in the whether it is having a cloud or not the nature of the sky never changes so in order to explain this venerable buddha datta buddha dasa uh, venerable buddha dasa in thailand he told when you are observing a conventional cinema or picture movie and uh, you see everything projects into the screen and you see three dimension or colored or black and white movies imagine when a movie showing a waterfall let the waterfall run few minutes but do you think that the screen is going to get wet no let the film going to show you a volcanic eruption and do you think that your screen going to burn no but they were showing it as a waterfall or eruption uh, the screen is remaining so therefore your uh, entertainment is just on the projection and it is fast moving from the waterfall to the uh, volcanic eruption and accordingly you develop emotions and you feel this is a tragedy or this is a comedy it's a nice edit- edited film and kind of thing but you do you see that whatever the tragedy or comedy in the same film hall the screen is waiting so equally to the tragedy as is the comedy likewise you are space your boundless space and unconditioned mind is there 
it never get colored by the then and their projections. And tip of the iceberg means just the science, just the projection, and upon which only we entertain so much of uh, emotions, likings and disliking. Ultimately, we lost the complete thing, thinking that myself, or oh, I am totality of myself, is now sad, or oh, totality of myself is happy, and uh, you don't know it is just a mere thin layer, just like a paint of a car. You see, it's a yellow car, black car, red car. You know the 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 layer of paint is just a few millimicrons. But inside, so much of thing, but you recognize only with the external, uh, the coloration. The Buddha mentioned, Pabhasaramidam bhikkave chittam agantuke upakkilite upakkilitam. O monks, your mind is naturally lustrous, naturally pure. But due to the dust outside, due to the crust outside, due to the rust outside, it do not appear lustrous. Asuta uta uputo jano tang napa janati. Unlistened, untrained, uh, sorry, unlearned commoners, they do not know. They see it as a rust, full of rust, full of dust, full of crust. So therefore they never see the value of the internal lustrous mind. So the Buddha says, for such people, I never see any kind of uh, one-pointedness or concentration because their attitude is that my mind is corrupted. Totality is corrupted. So therefore there is no detergent to clean my mind. If someone is having that kind of a, kind of a inferior, negative, destructive thought, they will never apply their mind for meditation. Even if they apply, they apply with the negative thinking. So they will never see through cut through this mere crust and it appears like a discouraging, it appears like a curse. But if you read in the Ekakanipata Anguttar Nikaya, immediately down the Buddha says, Pabhasanamidam bhikkavichittam agantuke upaklete upakleta. O monks, the mind is lustrous. Uh, externally there are some additional or uh, unrelated dust and rust and kind of thing. Sutavatu Arya Sahako Tanjanati. Person who has practiced and listened to a true people and positive thinking, they know, even though it appears like rust and the, with the crust and the dust, they know soon you crack it, scrap it. Inside you can see such a uh, lustrous mind. So therefore they practice with full of positive thinking. For such a people, for such a person, mindfulness works, concentration works, uh, the one-pointedness can possibility. So therefore your attitude to yourself, think I am a person with full of defilement, full of mis misbehavior, full of unsocial characteristic like, you will never apply yourself for meditation or you will never associate virtuous people will never take endurance and therefore even if you take your negative feeling is pulling you. But instead with little bit of exercises, little bit of mishaps, occasionally you can go to the boundless space, occasionally you can go to the worryless mind and then uh, try to uh, observe or try to uh, understand the way of way the Buddha is teaching and ob apply your mind with the positive thinking you find it outer crust with a little scratch. You can disprove and see internal glitter in nature. In order to total cleaning, it may take a lot of time, but mere proving yourself or resolution to say, even though it appears like this internal it is glitter, glittering and pure, then onward you become a yogi, worth called yogi, and you are positive. And that positivity is the only thing we are going to give in this meditation center. 
we are not going to take the whole contract of cleaning the everything and going to give with the lustrous mind that is mind your own business this is mindfulness is just to give a crack just to be a scratch and say this is glittering if you wish live up to that repeat it practice it so this first and foremost understanding this is called asevana pratyaya that is just first encounter see each and every human being is nothing but a lustrous mind they are pure by nature that is what the karl marx told man is naturally good it is the association they get corrupted and the exactly the buddha mentioned each and every human being is a um, immeasurable value but they due to their own wrong thinking and association they develop so much of inferiority complex they commit suicide they kill others because only they see outer rust they only see outer dust they can't penetrate through so that penetration is prevented because you are always outwardly you never make your energies to just to go in penetrate in plunging in so that is the art or we can say science or technique that the buddha suggest even though it appear like a rusty or dusty or corrupted yes it is corrupted because the association but in a the glittering part uh, never can be smeared just like the sky and the uh, clouds or the theater uh, fill the the screen and whatever the projected upon that or the tip of the iceberg and the total iceberg so this comparison or this kind of a uh, thinking of course by philosophically also you can achieve something but it won't make much of a lasting difference instead you have to apply yourself enter into the forest sit in a comfortable place bring the attention to your body as a gross object and within that if the situation is conducive you may see elementary characteristic observe it familiarize it be acquainted with it keep face to face with it and then try to see its evolution it's a changing nature and don't expect this is a this are the permanent characteristic of them nothing permanent everything is changing more and more you go there you are bound to see the space and in the first in set of instructions i try to mention many people come here and they sit and try to get the breath they go back after seven days but they am sorry i can't get the breath but back at home they get the breath when you come and do regimentation you can't see the breath so therefore don't worry about the breath just sit and be aware that i am sitting they find it is so the how do you call uh, so light diluted light they don't consider this as a meditation object and they find that while you are sitting itself you can understand i am not dead i am not sleep i am not unconscious that is the nibbana that very sitting but you never think nibbana must be very difficult thing to catch like this and you don't lose the direct touch because that is the way you have condition that is the way your teachers have been corrupted you that is the way your parents have corrupted you they so such a simple truth you f- you don't feel profound unless otherwise it is complicated so you are masters to make the simplicity into the complications and not only that you are infesting that disease to the others too moment you understand you become dumb bound how can we communicate the people because they are so they are expecting so much of complexity they ask pante without abhidhamma lessons can we do meditation mante without having the complete perfect uh, moral restraint can we do meditation mante without complete jhanik experiences can we do meditation and they streamline each and everything in the in charts and graphs and everything mess you out but the buddha is it is under your very nose you sit and we understand you are sitting that's it 
And if the breath happens, it happens. If the rising and falling happens, it may come. Don't chase behind. Chasing behind means you are employing volition. Each and every volition is a tension. Sabbe sankara dukkha, sabbe sankara anicca. But otherwise you don't feel like a meditator. So therefore you have to do something. But as far as you are doing, you are no more in the meditation. Of course at the beginning you prepare, you go into the forest and sit under the tree and all the kind of things are doing. But once the meditation catches, you are no more doing, things are happening just like the plane put into the autopiloting. And that is the skillful pilot. Of course you can do piloting even then. But he put into the autopiloting till that he is responsible. So this early part only we try to communicate, try to share in a meditation set. We don't take care about the whole kind of thing unless otherwise you become a residential in the monk. There we share each other. But as far as the lady is concerned, this very positive thinking, that very just outer crust is the one going to give the first impression and that blur, that bewilder everything and look at others also from their outer crust. You also measure yourself from the outer crust. You never know the pathway plunging inside. So therefore, soon you go the micro, millimicron kind of a paint, inside you find what is available. So this penetration may be happening through one place and that indicates your potential, but your theoretical mind says no, all the outer layer must be out of dust or crust. So therefore you are waiting everything to be cleared. But you know, whenever the sperm enter into the ovum, it covers everything. It never allows any sperm to let in. So therefore in one point if your uh, the meditative mind enters into this positivity, no defilement can later come and interfere. It always covering, it is natural protection is there. So therefore, quick people with the quick wit, they the scratch and see, yes, there is a thin layer of dust or rust, but inside it is there. So therefore, not rushing it, understand this thin layer of dust is not giving any kind of a devaluation or uh, inferiority to the glittering mind. So you know the dust as dust, the glittering nature and the glittering thing, and then you lose, uh, you do not entertain any doubt, do not entertain any frustration, do not entertain any uh, worries, and just observe it. And there are thousand and one times, once you really correct it with your perspective, you get chances to wash it off. Don't worry about that. That is a part and partial of the refinement or part of the evolution that is going to take place. Buddha says maximum it will take seven years once you scratch at sea. And the minimum he says seven days. And in the Bodhi Raja Sutta, Buddha says if you know it is in the morning, evening you can get same day service, put into same day service, evening you can get it. So this is the way it happens, so this rationalism, the, the uh, radical reflection, this thinking pattern also must go in hand in hand with the meditation. It may be part and partial with the theoretical uh, the talks and the reading of the teaching of the Buddha, the other part is discussing with the other core meditators and understand when they are get stuck in this material sphere, when they get stuck with the immaterial sphere, when they get stuck in the boredom and the other kind of thing, they are talking genuinely about their experience. Of course they think it is a failure, but it is a utter progress. So therefore whatever your interpretation on the meditation is complete to prestudory. Every success you consider as nothing but the concentration. Every failure you report is nothing but the progress in the vipassana or, or wisdom. So therefore don't involve your interpretation on your experience, just tell the experience as the experience and that mere very 
expression, mere communication itself will cut off the, the frustration. No tension because you are just reporting what is happening. You, your commentaries are not necessary. The moment you communicate it, next day you will go with so much of potential, just like a charged battery. So this is how uh, discussions and the talks are going to happen and while in the meditation. So layer by layer, you see they are getting rid of. But by even though you remove one layer, next day also you have to start with the same like a beginner. Again, again another day, you, you can't claim that yesterday I had a very successful sitting and there should, therefore should, I should have today. No. It's changes are happening. But you know what is the appropriate technology to start with. That appropriate technology is much, much more than the omniscient knowledge of the Buddha. Because your thing is the one ultimately going to go with you. But the Buddha is going to catalytic effect is there. He is teaching and he is supporting it. But don't think that by learning or by hearting all the what the Buddha mentioned, you are going to get enlightened. Never. It is happening because your own practice. So I hope today talk also will helpful for you to come into the correct track. May it be so and you may experience more and more the how to enter into this voidness. With that remark I would like to sum up the today's talk. Thank you very much for listening.